Well, it's certainly nice weather for ducks and it seems like the geese like it as well. I'm here on Grove Farm in Westbury, which is around about 10 miles away from Toaster. I'm here to meet one of Toaster's smaller trainers, John Blenko. Looking forward to finding out much more about him. Well, John, thank you for having us here at your kennels today. Not the best of weather, but you say it's regularly like this. We've got used to it over the last couple of months, obviously. I think everyone has. We're down in a dip, right on a farm, obviously, and uh, it's a... Uh, from all the hills that come from the, you know, into the dip, the rain just runs straight in. Every time there's rain, we have to get the mops out or the buckets out, and uh, you know, it's unbelievable at the moment. You haven't had your license that long. How long has it been now? Well, we've been. Uh, I've had the license since Toaster actually started where the track I'm attached to. That has been about uh, 15 months now, and obviously, we've started all the way from hearing rumours that Toaster might have a track. We only live two minutes down the road, uh, so if we were ever going to hopefully become a trainer that was the time to do it and we've sort of uh, we looked into it trying to find a place and we were lucky enough to fall on our feet where we are now and like I say 10 minutes from the track we've got everything we need we feel for the amount of dogs we've got so fingers crossed you know onwards and upwards are you enjoying it loving it loving it and uh, we've been lucky enough to know the right people uh, people who helped us get where we are and uh, like I say you can start then enjoying it. Your history well, in life and in the sport all revolves around sport, really. You were involved in football and then you went on to become Milton Keynes Racing Manager. Yeah, uh, sport's been massive in my life. Mm -hmm. if, it, if it hasn't been for sport, you know, I don't know what I'd have been doing. But I started off as a youngster, as an apprentice at Leicester City. Uh, it didn't quite work out there. I had two years there. So when you come out of sport, you do miss it. So once the football career was over, and I know you suffered a, a bad injury, you'd been into greyhound racing because of the time off that football gave you, and that led you to becoming Milton Keynes Racing Manager. Unfortunately, I broke my leg playing football, so it probably was the time then to get a proper job, and that's when I went into Milton Keynes as a racing office, uh, assistant racing manager, sorry, under Bill Johnson. I was there five years, I had a great time, but unfortunately we were there until the closure of the track, and that was December 2005, Boxing Day was the last meeting, and uh, unfortunately, that was the time, that was 2005, so i come out of the sport then. Would have loved to have gone, gone straight back into it as a racing manager somewhere else, but the jobs are not there really, you know, to a penny to pick up anywhere. So doing odd jobs, different jobs, not really jobs I want to do. It came to transport, Toast was going to have a new track, and it was always something I dreamt to do and being a trainer. You know, sport, the buzz. When people talk about football, they say, you you know, you play football, you're a decent footballer, and you've got a buzz out of playing football. The goals, you know, goals scored, you know, you get a buzz, mm -hmm. and I feel that the greyhounds will give me that buzz back a bit. Do you feel that the connection which you obviously have with them is an advantage? You come Christmas Eve, didn't you, Cracker? That's why you're called Cracker. With the less number of dogs, uh, we've got that slightly personal touch with them. I know, I'm not saying, all the trainers love their dogs, I know, and, uh, but... We're all in the same little block. They know you, like you're saying. Yeah, and you, you just have that sort of personal touch with them. They know you. And all I hope in any sport, that maybe from that we can reach, all of them we can reach their potential, uh, which would make me happy. Well, let's talk about some of the dogs you've got here. Uh, we galloped Quiver's match today, who's now uh, fast asleep on his bed. But uh, he's just coming back from injury, and one that you're hoping could come back and win a few races. Well... Yeah, his kennel name's Thunder, and he's so tired now you wouldn't realise, but every morning all he does is bark, bark, bark. So he's had horrific injury, really, two grassless muscles, uh, and he has been retired, and he loves going up the gallop like you've seen today. He absolutely loves it, so without upsetting him, I keep taking him up the gallop, taking him up the gallop, he keeps coming off, coming off. So I said to him in his ear, we'll give you another go, shall we, mate? <laughs> You've also got Amelie Jeannie here, who I know is pretty close to your heart because she's one of the first greyhounds you've got here and also has been one of the best. Yeah, she come with her brother, uh, Holden Vin. Her brother is Holden Chico, who won the Olympic final at Hove this year. So they're from a good litter. We were fortunate enough to, to take her to a little competition at Nottingham. Let's just say she turned the tables on Charlie Lister's dog. She was eight to one and Charlie Lister's was two to five. It was fantastic because for a little trainer like me mm. to take on the big guns like that, with our first little competition, you know, it was a fantastic night. She's just coming back from a slight injury. What are the plans? And do you think she can notch up a few more wins for you? Yeah, the plans, uh, she's had a little niggle, nothing major, just, you know, something I feel, again, from playing sport myself, you must get over these injuries, give them plenty of time. The only way is to rest them. 
you can you can manipulate and physio, but rest is the best. A good friend of mine, Darren Holmes, told me uh, the other night, he gave me a slate and actually saying, what are you doing with Emily, Jean? You're running her at toaster all the time, because that is an open class bitch. So get on your travels and go and win a few more races with her. So that's what we'll be doing. I oh, wish you all the best with that. Turbine Tina, you've also got here. We've seen her today. She uh, has already won an open race at Henlow, uh, recently out of season, and uh, another one you think you'll be on your travels with. Yeah, she's done well for us. Won eight out of 20, uh, 22 races. And she's come back from season, like you say. Again, we feel maybe Toast is just that bit too far for a 480. And if we, you know, if we can gauge and pick the right races for her, I've always said she's better than she shows at Toaster. So you've got new kennels being built here so you can expand slightly. I'm interested to see them. Is it all right to go and have a look? Absolutely. So in the distance, there's where the new kennel block will be. This is obviously the original one, which was at two stables that you've converted into four double kennels. Yeah. And this was actually the tack room. Yeah, we converted that into a kitchen, obviously the, where we prepare the food and make cups of tea for the owners, etc. So if we come round here, this is obviously the uh, older kennel block, not the older yeah, kennel block, it's very new, still only 15 months old. Yeah, me, me old dad who's 82 helped me build these walls and different stuff. My uncle's a fantastic carpenter, did all the woodwork on everything, so I've had great help. So this is still very much a work in progress, but uh, this looks like it's going to be very nice indeed. Well, we hope so. We've, we've been able to uh, do this this time, these kennels from scratch, so we've done it exactly how we wanted to do it. If we can get 12 or 13, 14 dogs, we'll be made. It would be brilliant. It's only a few weeks till this kennel block will be finished and ready and you're planning a bit of a grand opening. So hopefully, yeah, we're looking to... We've got a few contacts in the horse racing world and we're hoping to get uh, Richard Johnson, the jockey, probably going to be champion jockey, obviously, this year, who we know for a couple of trainers who we know, uh, to maybe come down when he's free, get a few of the owners down who have been supported, like I said, all the people who helped me build the kennels and just have a bit of a morning down here, a few drinks, etc., and just to, to sort of say, yeah, we've done it, let's crack on. So what's the ambition? You're obviously earning a decent enough living at Toaster, but you're talking about travelling with open-class dogs. What's the ambition for John? I've committed now to do it full-time. Uh, so with the support of the owners we've already got, and hopefully we can pick up a few more, you know, the ambition is to, in life, do something you like doing for a start. If you're getting away with it, making a living out of it, and, you know, everyone around you is enjoying it and be happy, that'll make me happy, so... It'd be great.